So I posted a video of an interview I did with Saxon Penchik, who's a top level CrossFit athlete. And I said that CrossFit and mixed martial arts was a really good combination. And then, of course, as always, some people started writing or replying, it's not a good combination. And I go, okay, that is so weird because I know a lot of professional fighters, top freaking level, who are using CrossFit for their endurance and power. Okay, so let's first see what CrossFit means. What does it stand for? This is the definition. CrossFit is a branded fitness workout that involves constantly mixed functional movements performed at high intensity. Wow, that definition is exactly what a mixed martial artist needs. Listen, when people talk about me, right, and my career, many times they say that I was one of the first fighters who was actually cross-trained. Now, when you go back in time, what I was really doing, since I realized the reason we are getting tired so fast, was combining power training with endurance and stamina. By the way, what is the difference between stamina and endurance, right? We hear this all the time. Both are getting tired. We know that. Okay, I'll explain. Stamina is the person's ability to do something at maximum effort for as long as they are able. Endurance is a person's ability to do something not at maximum intensity, but still for as long as possible. So, stamina focuses on maximizing output, while endurance focuses on maximizing time. Boom. There you have it. I had to look that up uh, a long time ago as well. Now, back to what I was doing in the past when I was cross training. I knew that when I would do, let's say, an abs workout and then I would do a stamina workout, those two really don't mix together. I mean, what you're doing is you're making your core very tight with the abs because you're pumping a lot of blood in there and those abs balloon up and that will give you less chest expansion since everything is tight. And that means less chest expansion, less room to fill up your lungs. So before a fight, what I would do, I would do abs, but then I would also stretch my abs out. Now I say abs because that's what I thought at the time when I had zero understanding of breathing. But what I was really doing, I was actually st stretching out my intercostals. Now your intercostals are the muscles that you have here in between your ribs. And because I did that, I was able to breathe easier since I had better chest expansion. So unknowingly, I was doing something correct. Amazing. So every endurance athlete, stretch your chest before you perform. Now imagine you're on the ground rolling, right? You're constantly pulling, 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 pulling. That's what grappling is, pulling, pulling. So you're working out your upper body and your arms. And then when the referee puts you back on your feet, now you have to push, push, push. And I know this is punching, but it's pushing and pulling, right? Those two don't really work well together. But wait a minute. What if I start training like that and get my body used to it? Okay, that sounds good. What about adding stamina to it? Oh, and there the idea for cross training was born. I would do, let's say, a bench press, elbows inside, side, because that's how we punch, and then pull to the chest, right? And then I would kick it back. Everything I did, I would do as hard as I could. And then I would do every exercise, 50 seconds, five zero, which would give me 10 seconds to go to the next station. And listen, after 35 seconds, your muscles start to really tire when you use enough weight, of course. And that will make the last 15 seconds really freaking hard. So what you need to do, you need to find a weight for every exercise that you can, which, which you can just pull it off. Now then, for example, I would do squats, abs and throwing knees in the air, really freaking fast, 10 left, 10 right, 10 left, super high pace, biceps, triceps, sprawls, dips, pull-ups with short sprints, like 25 feet, back and forth, 50 seconds, super high intensity. All those together will be 12 exercises, 12 minutes, one minute break, and then set number two, one minute break and one more set. So, with the one minute breaks, it would be a 38 minute high intensity workout. Now these workouts I would do after a sparring class, whether it was rolling or striking. And I would do it only twice a week because it's really hard on the body. And I, of course, had also different workouts. So don't worry about it, right? You have tie pads, you have focus miss, hitting the back, hill sprints, freaking kicking your back. You can do this a plethora of crazy exercises out there. I will go like four times a week, 100%, not 99, 100% and the rest of the workouts will be around 80%. This is, of course, so I don't burn myself out and I overtrain. 
So I simply figured that the more uncomfortable I make it for myself in the stamina and power training department, the easier the fight will be for me. <clears throat> and what do you know? It actually freaking worked. Unbelievable. My mother should hear this. Well, let's say it again. Interviewers in the past would say I was one of the pioneers who cross-trained, right? Okay. Where do you think the word cross stands for in CrossFit? Now, does a mixed martial artist need to do all the exercises that CrossFit has? No. Why on earth? He, or better his coach, should tailor make a program for him that is safe, just like I did. This means that CrossFit and mixed martial arts is actually really freaking good together. Listen, I even had a guy sending me a link from a video where you saw a bunch of CrossFit accidents that had happened in the past. I go, really? You're, you're really that dumb. I hope that everybody knows that I can show you a YouTube fail video from pretty much any sport out there, even playing pool, right? I mean, come on. So that comment, I'm sorry to say, oh, well, I'm not sorry. That was not really smart. It's real, right? When people read a few bad comments who are based on nothing from the video, nothing from the interview, and I come to that interview, I come back to that later, and then those people start making comments before even watching what's on the video. That drives me insane. Listen, there are always bad gyms out there. Look at the Instagram channel, McDojo Life. That guy focuses on all the bad teachers in martial arts. And there are a lot of them, trust me. So as a pro athlete, when you decide to go to a cheap person, yeah. Yeah, cheap person most of the time don't know anything about it. And then just like any other sport, that's physical, that's physical. That can be very dangerous for you. But when you have a trainer like Greg Russo, the guy in the video and who is Saxon's trainer, trust me, you will never get injured because that guy knows exactly what he's doing. Why do you believe otherwise Saxon is just a, such an animal? I mean, I don't know if you know the guy. He's, a, he's insane. Listen, I see karate teachers, self-defense teachers, BJJ, boxing, kickboxing, you name it, who suck. They have no business of being a coach. And unfortunately, you have bad trainers in CrossFit as well. And like I just said, you can, find, you can find them in any other sport. So it is up to you to find a good and safe coach. But don't tell me that CrossFit isn't good for mixed martial arts. And especially you shouldn't say that when you don't even train mixed martial arts. Or maybe you train and you don't compete yourself. Because there's a gigantic difference between training in a nice and safe environment and then doing that same performance under pressure. That's what separates the man from the boy. That would be the same as me making a, a stupid comment on a person who's fixing my car. What the freak? I don't know anything about cars. I should simply shut up. And even when, and I drive a Ford Explorer, just for an example, bring my car to the Ford dealer, and that person who worked on it did a bad job, well, that doesn't mean that all the mechanics at that Ford dealer are actually bad, right? You will be incredibly stupid to think that. Now, does the Ford garage need to pay attention to that guy? Of course it needs to do. I mean, it's, it, it will be very stupid So because they are responsible. So they can either fire the guy or they can teach him some more, whatever it is, but that's up to them. But don't start yelling that the whole garage is bad. That makes no sense. Now, these people who make comments like that are most of the time the same people who scream at the waiter when their food is bad. Somehow, they blame the waiter. Hmm. They can't think logically anymore because emotions are involved. You know, and once emotions are getting involved, you know, then everything goes down the drain. And because of that, they don't even realize. You know, go, wait a minute. The waiter didn't make the food. And what happens? They kill the messenger. They don't tip them right just because the cook messed up. And this is the world we live in. We judge a person or a company by the mistakes they make, never on the good things. Unless, of course, it happens to ourselves or in our family, right? Then we're not responsible. Oh, no, no, no. It's not my fault that he who works for me or is my family member is a bad person. That doesn't make the whole family bad. See what I mean? That's the same with this video that I posted on of the interview. Just because some people don't think like this and they make bad comments, that doesn't mean that the video is bad. It just means that they base their opinion on things they have experienced in the past.
and experienced, of course, themselves. Or maybe they heard it from others. And when they personally had a bad experience at a CrossFit place, therefore, suddenly, all CrossFit must be bad. You see, that makes no sense to me. But hey, whatever, man. You can say whatever you want. It's all, all good. As long as you know that I like to counter those words, especially when they're stupid, right? I'm going to have to react. Now, in the interview with Saxon and his coach, Greg, we don't even talk about what exercises will be good. We talk about mindset, how to develop a mindset that makes a person train six, seven hours a day. Because right now, in this world, those people, oof, they are the exception. I mean, let's, let's face it, most of us can't do it. Therefore, it's always better to talk bad about the person so we don't feel so bad about ourselves. Come on, guys, let's not do that. So if you really want to see if you're able to do things like Saxon does, who is considered one of the top athletes in the world, I mean, he's in an insane physical condition. And listen, this comes from me, right? I have trained the highest special forces, the Marines, the SEALs, Homeland Security Investigation, you name it. Please watch this interview. I promise you. All the back information that you're going to get in this video and you're going to hear is helpful when you want to become an exceptional athlete, not a CrossFit athlete, just an athlete in general. Listen, I'm blown away with a guy like Saxon and his coach, Greg, actually. And by the way, we also talk about that. We talk about the connection, uh, the trainers, you know, and their athletes. How, how does that happen? Because that's magic. Listen, if you're lucky enough to find a guy like Greg Russell, and you do what he says, trust me, you will succeed. And whatever shitty place you signed up for, let's say a BJJ place, and it sucks, that doesn't mean that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu sucks. That just, that just means that that particular trainer sucks. So don't start looking for an injuries that happened at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu video because you will find one. But again, that's not the sport of BJJ. Now, let's take a deep breath. Enjoy life, make comments on experiences you had, but don't base everything on one bad experience. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. Oh, and I want to say a very happy new year. And now I'm going to knock you out. Bonk.